From the day I left school to begin my apprenticeship as an engineer, it took me over 12 years before I finally got the opportunity to work in the automation industry as a partner coach for Loxon. And a big part of this was due to following the traditional path that a lot of aspiring engineers take. So apprenticeship, college, university, MVQs, etc., and then slowly climbing the career ladder. But now after finally getting here and after spending over seven years working across the three main industries, what I've discovered are the things that actually matter to people. What areas people should focus time and resources and ultimately what's actually going to get people into the industry much quicker than it took me. And I learned this largely through trial and error and without anyone to guide me in the right direction. So I've been pondering, if I could go back in time with my current knowledge, what would I do differently? So that's exactly what I'm gonna discuss with you today. I'm gonna to hopefully be that guide that I didn't have to hopefully help you move into the industry quicker than it took me. So we're gonna start by exploring the three primary industries within the automation industry. Then we're gonna dive into the most crucial skills that actually stack on top of each other and offer the greatest return on your time investment. And then finally, we'll explore strategies to secure full-time automation and control positions or win projects as a business owner. So yeah, firstly guys, if I was gonna do all of this again the first thing I would decide is what industry interests me the most that I think I'm going to want to spend the majority of my time in at least to start with and the nice thing about all these industries is there's a huge amount of overlap so you build the skills in one of them that transfers very easily to the others so what are those industries so the first one being smart home automation like the residential sector and this is a much newer sector than the other two and the whole buzzword smart home has got a lot of hype over the last several years or so and it's important to differentiate between the sort of smart home IoT internet of things products like your ring doorbell your hive thermostat your Philips Hue light bulbs etc that's all consumer grade off the shelf very simple solutions without any real proper system integration so that's smart home but I'm talking more about home automation that's a better word for the sector that I'm talking about. Now with proper home automation systems, there's obviously a higher cost to this, which means there's a much smaller market. And the fact that it's all pretty new anyway, certainly in the UK, means that it's a much smaller market with less opportunity, although it certainly is growing year on year on year. And the other thing to consider is proper home automation is probably more suited to larger buildings. So usually that means wealthier individuals with bigger properties who perhaps need this type of automation to simplify things within their home. But then when you start to go down in the market to maybe more the sort of mid-tier properties, it's a much harder sell and you definitely need to develop your sales skills to be able to communicate the benefits of actually having integrated full automation system. Whereas with the other sectors, which we get into in a second, they're a much easier sell because there's a clear return on investment. So onto the second sector, and this is the building building management system or BMS sector. So this is more commercially focused. And this is what I personally enjoy the most at the moment. This is where I spend most of my time doing system design and control panels and whatnot. And ultimately, every commercial building, certainly larger buildings like hotels, leisure centers, schools, those sort of buildings, pretty much every single one will have a plant room or boiler room, which will need all that equipment intelligently managed in an efficient way to ensure that energy usage is kept to a minimum. For example, in a hotel, the guests are getting hot water, heating, air conditioning, etc., when they need it. So it's all about balancing out the demand and trying to conserve as much energy, ultimately money, as possible. And with the BMS sector, things like getting to net zero is hugely incentivized at the moment by governments. And there's also sort of other restrictions coming in that are encouraging businesses to reduce their carbon 
carbon footprint. And if you can communicate and demonstrate and show your potential clients statistics on the amount of energy and money that you're going to save them, this is a much easier sell, in my opinion. Also, there's much more opportunity. You think of all the larger commercial buildings out there in the world that huge, huge amounts of electricity. If you can just save them 5%, not even that, on their annual energy bill, that's in some cases saving them tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds a year. And then the third sector is industrial. And this is probably the sector that's been around for the longest, which has definitely the most opportunity and the most variety. So looking at businesses that do manufacturing, do food processing, pharmaceuticals, automotive, there's just so many sectors within this sector that require intelligent control systems and automation. And again, this I think is a much easier sell than the home automation, because if you can demonstrate to a business that again, either you're going to save them energy or you're going to streamline their processes through automation, it's a very clear return on investment for that client. And they can see that they're going to make their money back in X amount of months or a year or so. Okay, so now on to the second thing, and that would be learning the right skills in the right order that build on top of each other. Now, this is pretty difficult to know if you've not really been in the industry before or had any sort of real guidance from anyone. But if I was to go back with the knowledge that I have now, the first skill that I would learn would be electrical schematics. Hands down, no question whatsoever. Understand how to read and interpret electrical schematics. And that's kind of the beginner level that I'd make sure that I feel confident in before going to the next stage. And then this next stage, which builds on top of the first stage, understanding electrical schematics, is now understanding control panels. So how they put together, and I'd be referencing and using my skills and knowledge that I've developed on the first stage to help me then understand what's going in and what's going on in a control panel. And the best way to do this is to have images or if possible, a real panel with the matching schematics which you can then reference the schematics and then reference the labeling and components within the panel. And you can slowly piece together how the system is actually operating. And this not only will help you with the designing and then building and then testing of control panels, but it will also help you with understanding the best method and how to break down a system when it comes to fault finding. Okay, and then the final skill is PLC programming. And it's really important that you don't focus on this until Till you've got a good understanding of electrical schematics and then also the control panels. And the reason that it's so important not to jump ahead and start straight away on the PLC programming, because I've seen this far too many times, time and time again, when I worked at Loxon as a partner coach, I'd see individuals and businesses coming in for the week's manufacturer training, where really manufacturing training is just training people on the software and the system rather than everything else that comes before that and that underpins it. And because they don't really have a good understanding of everything that underpins the programming, like the design, like the panel building, like the infrastructure and how everything works and control philosophy etc they're pretty lost to be honest with you so they do this training they might scrape through actually doing the programming but they don't know in reality what that's actually doing in terms of hardware and then they don't end up really lasting in this field of work so really important do not jump ahead to the PLC programming you'll be far better off building up to that through learning electrical schematics and then the control panels and I know it's very tempting to jump ahead and do the programming because I know people in the industry they see these missioning engineers, rock up on site for a day, get their laptop out, press a few keys and have the system up and running in a day and then head home after making, you know, like 600, 700, 800 quid a day and it looks like easy money. But what you don't see is the little niggles, the little teething problems that happens when you do commissioning on site, which these engineers have a good understanding of how to rectify them because they understand, or at least the good ones understand, like I've just mentioned, every everything that underpins that programming. And the third thing that I know now, which I didn't when I started, is how important it is just to get hands-on as quickly as possible. Forget all the theory, just get practical, hands-on experience as quickly as you can. Whether that be installing some kit in your own home, whether that being winning a project, but make sure that you know how to deliver that project before you win it, or perhaps getting yourself a position as an engineer or trainee engineer at a firm that does automation and control. And if 
that means taking a step back financially for a year or two for you to get that experience, that's going to be far more valuable in the long run than it is taking a hit of say five or 10K or whatever in that short period of time, a year or so when you're gathering that knowledge. And just following on from that, guys, just for those of you that are thinking perhaps you need to go to university and get formal qualifications, you really don't. Pretty much everyone that I know within the industry, and I know a lot of successful people that are running successful businesses in all of these different industries that we talked about, none of them have formal university degrees. None of them have a bachelor's in electrical engineering, for example, nor do I. And I can tell you that spending your time in the industry, getting hands-on, maybe starting starting as a trainee is going to be far more valuable and give you a much larger return on your time invested than spending four years studying a university degree. Also, you won't have to spend all that money on tuition fee. And then just to round this third point off, guys, if you're a business owner looking to get into the industry and you're worried about clients potentially asking to see your formal qualifications or any qualifications for that matter, I just want to assure you that at least from my perspective and my experience, a client has never asked for me to produce my certificates of all my formal qualifications. Not that I have university degrees, but yeah, they don't need to see it. They don't ask to see it. I think as long as you're good at what you do, good at helping communicate to clients what they need and actually help them make good buying decisions, in my mind, that's, that's enough. That's all they need. And guys, if you're not already aware, we have a private Facebook group where we help businesses and individuals develop the skills, knowledge and understanding and help them develop into different industries within the control and automation space. And if you're interested to see what lies at the heart of a control and automation system, a control panel, and you'd like to see what it looks like building one from scratch, then I think that you might like this video here.